What's going on everybody? Brian here from Working Class Fishing. Today we're out at a little pond going after some trout. Make sure you stay tuned. We're going to be fishing with... All right, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about my spoon rig. Now, if you go back and you look at some of our other videos, you'll see that I have talked about different types of spoons in those videos. And one of the spoons that I really revere is the Thomas Buoyant spoon. This one here is a Thomas Buoyant this is a 1 8 ounce and you can always see if you can see past the reflection there it'll give you the weight and I really enjoy these spoons now let's talk a little bit about the the terminal rigging here okay so you'll notice that you have a very small split ring there and so that split ring is where you can interchange your hooks right now I have a uh, barbless siwash hook. Well, it had a barb and I pinched it off and I tried to take it off as much as I could. So this siwash hook is a size 8, which compares pretty well to the size of the actual spoon itself. And I always like one after it goes on to the split ring to maybe go about halfway. That way it can kind of free range and all that. Now some folks, they'll actually put a little barrel swivel here and that way when the fish takes it and starts spinning it doesn't have the tendency to bind and pop out of the mouth and that's always a good idea too i just leave it like this for the little trout that i get i mean i get big trout but uh, some of the little trout that i get it that doesn't seem to matter then i go up here and i use an appropriately sized snap swivel uh, and so we have the clevis but you notice that the swivel spins so i really don't have to have <clears throat> this this spinning stuff going on with the spoon itself I go up here to a bumper. Now, this one here, I'm going to go by feel. I'm going to say that this is probably 10-pound test, which is probably a little bit excessive, but um, you could go down to 4 or 6 for your standard trout or even bass, um, and, and it works out fine. So I run that, and I got about 5 feet of bumper on here, okay? You could go shorter. You can go more, but I prefer to have about 5 feet of bumper. Now, as far as everything else goes on this, where I connect it to, so I have 20 pound braid on here, and that's probably excessive too. However, that's what I had. Just like you might have a spool of 20 pound braid, you don't have to go out and buy 10 pound or 8 pound or whatever else. But up here at the top, I have a double unit knot, and the double unit knot is connecting that bumper. So I have a pretty seamless bumper about five to five and a half feet of bumper 10 pound test you could do six you could do eight you could do four whatever you want you don't have to run 20 pound test uh, braid but that's what I have and it casts pretty well the rod that I have is made by Okuma and it is a Salilo and this one is a six foot rod and the line weight is two to six pound and your lure weight is one thirty second to quarter ounce so this has got a really good action and a good thump the reel on here is an Okuma Ignite IT30A, and this one, uh, you could use it on a larger rod, but when we got it, we decided uh, that we wanted to get something that we could put on maybe a little bit larger, longer rod, but it's a great trout reel, and uh, you can really load it up with the braid, so we loaded the braid onto it and everything else. The braid and that nice, thin uh, mono or fluoro bumper even with that eighth ounce lure, we get a really good cast distance. So what I do with this is I let it sink and I just do a retrieve and I let it thump. And what I'm looking for is just like a little thump at the end of the rod tip as I'm reeling along. And I'm not trying to go excessively fast, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for kind of a, a swaying wobbling action in the spoon. And that's basically what you're looking for. It takes a little bit of practice to get it down, if you can see that spoon there as an opera retrieve where it's going to spin and flutter out of control. Now, sometimes that will work. We're going to do another cast. So cast out there, let it sink, and you want to have a little bow in your line, and you just want to retrieve back nice and slow and let that wobble. And typically that wobble, kind of that, that fluttering, jerking action, there's a fish that jumped out there for you. That fluttering, jerking action, as long as you don't hang up in grass or weeds or anything else, that's what attracts the fish. It looks like a wounded bait fish, and that's what you're really looking for with that. So big things with this setup. Now, you can leave trebles on. You control these. 
I've trolled them with a lot of success, and they work extremely well on stock of rainbow trout, especially when it warms up. Like we've had a good warm spell, and it's been a, a, actually a pretty effective lure today. So just want to keep that bow in the line, a little bit of a thump on the end of your rod. If you use too heavy of an action of a rod, you're not going to be able to get that thump going. So you want to just make sure that you have that going, cast it out there, and you can even let it settle and sink a little bit. So you can let it sink, form the bow in your line, and retrieve back. And that's the basics of throwing. This spoon down on the bottom because I keep seeing the fish kind of just cruising the bottom. Oh, there's a little bass. <laughs> little bass. What's up, little dude? I'll take a bass on the spoon. I saw him. Kind of picked up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Tommy B does it again. <sighs> he came out of nowhere. So just kind of slow trolling that up a little bit. All right. Not a big trout, but a decent one. I'm going to keep his head down there in the water. Okay, let's check out. Wow. Um, this dude has an injury, as you can see. Uh, that looks like a bird injury, actually. So let's take... Okay. So we got that first fish on the Tommy B. Let's go ahead and see if there's any others out here. I had a bass actually come up. I saw it. You know, you can tell. I got that little black tail. Oh. I think my spoon's a little twisted. Went in and out, put some flash out. There was a good one. Came up and took a swipe at it. Let's see if it comes back. Oh, got another little one. All right, what do we got? Oh, a bass! Look at that, guys. Little largey. Hi, huh, buddy. Well, you came out to play. Well, thank you so much. Here we go. All right. Little largey. First bass of 2022. Well, he's small, but thanks, bud. See you, dude. Cool. Oh, spoonfish. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Tangled up my line. Dude, seriously. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, okay, let's get you un untangled. The hazards of fishing two rods at once. Okay, all right, all right. Well, everybody, thanks for watching again. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, leave us a comment if you want to see some future stuff. 
And also make sure that you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos, for the latest shorts, for the latest podcasts. And if you just like listening to podcasts, make sure you slide over to Spotify and follow us. Give us a five-star rating too. We got some cool stuff coming up. We're doing some collabs. So thanks again for watching.